The doctors declare a newborn dead, but at the funeral, the mother hears her baby crying and can't believe what has happened. Night had fallen on Brantley, a small town known for its deep roots and unique sense of community. In the local hospital, a modest but well-kept building, a scene of pure love and expectation was unfolding. Mary, a 28-year-old with bright eyes and a radiant smile, was ready to receive the greatest gift life could give her, a son. Ethan, her husband, was by her side, holding her hand as waves of anticipation swept through the room. We'll get through this together, love. The man's grip was firm and his words a silent promise of unconditional support. The room was filled with an almost tangible energy. The smell of the clean room mingled with the soft beeps of the medical monitors that monitored Mary's vital signs. The nurses gathered around with a mixture of seriousness and joy, each aware of the magnitude of the moment that was to come. The pain of the contractions hit the woman like a strong wave, each one bringing her closer to the moment when she would finally meet her little boy. In the midst of the pain, she looked for strength in her husband. I'm here, love. You're doing incredibly well. Ethan tried to keep the tenderness in his voice, but fear and worry betrayed him. The feeling of helplessness was strangely overwhelming for him, who could only watch as his wife endured the pain of childbirth. Dr. Simmons, the obstetrician, entered the room, bringing with her a feeling of calm that seemed to defy the tension in the room. Mary, we're almost there. Soon you'll have your little Jake in your arms, she said, and an affectionate smile spread across her face. As hours passed, the clock seemed to alternate between dizzying speeds and an agonizingly slow pace. With each contraction, with each deep breath, Mary came closer to the moment she so longed for. Finally, Dr. Simmons announced the arrival of little Jake. Come on, come on, that's it, well done, celebrated the doctor, pulling the baby out and taking him straight to the crib, along with the nurses. But something was wrong. Instead of the melodious cry of a newborn, as expected, a deafening silence took over the room. The silence stretched on, one second seeming like an eternity. Everyone's eyes were fixed on the doctor, waiting for the cry that didn't come. The doctor's face went through a rapid succession of emotions, from anticipation to shock, concern, and finally, deep sadness. She swallowed an almost imperceptible gesture. Is everything all right? The mother, weak and panting, asked, her heart pounding with worry. Dr. Simmons' gaze, which had once exuded confidence, was now covered by a cloud of hopelessness. She tried one more time applying pressure with her fingers gently to the baby's small chest, hoping, praying for some sign that everything would be all right. But everything remained unnervingly quiet. She looked up, meeting the parent's anguished gaze. An unbearable weight settled on her chest. The task she had been given was undoubtedly the cruelest of all. The doctor took a deep breath, preparing herself for the inevitable. Mary, Ethan. She began, her voice breaking. She paused, trying to find the right words, but what words could soften such a tragedy? The mother's eyes, still full of hope, met those of the doctor. A hint of confusion mixed with fear began to bubble up inside her. The father held his wife's hand tightly, as if trying to anchor her against the storm that was about to arrive. I'm, I'm so sorry. Dr. Simmons's voice was just a whisper, almost drowned out by the constant hum of the surrounding monitors. She continued, her voice trembling. We did everything we could, but... But your baby, he... he didn't make it. The silence that followed was deafening. What? How? What do you mean? The parents' cries echoed through the room, filled with disbelief and despair. Mary felt the floor disappear from her feet. A loud ringing filled her ears, drowning out Ethan's sobs beside her. Jake suffered a complication known as neonatal hypoxia. It's a condition that happens when a baby doesn't receive enough oxygen before, during, or shortly after birth. We tried every possible intervention, but the damage to his heart was... was too extensive. I'm so sorry. Her explanation, however objective and clear, sounded like a distant echo in the face of the shocking reality of the news. The poor mother could feel the warm tears streaming down her cheeks, but she was still in a state of shock that seemed to have engulfed her, shielding her from the crushing reality of her loss. The doctor took the baby and handed him to her so that she could see him at least once. The young woman looked down at the small, silent being in her arms. Her little Jake, so perfect, so still. 
Mara felt as if a cold dagger had pierced her heart. The shock turned into pain, an unbearable pain that tore at her soul. The scream trapped in her throat came out as a muffled moan. Tears poured down, flooding her face as she held the small, silent sun. The dream of being a mother, the nights imagining what her baby's face would look like, all disappeared and was replaced by an emptiness that consumed every inch of her being. A pain so intense that it seemed she would never be able to breathe again, never be able to live again. Every beat of her heart was a cruel reminder that her little Jake's heart didn't beat together with hers. Her world, which a few moments ago had been full of hope and joy, was now shattered. The reality that Jake was gone was more than Mary could bear. She clung to this pain, allowing it to consume her, because it was the only connection she had left with her precious son. The rest of the evening was a blur of tears and mumbled condolences. Nurses came and went, offering words of consolation and looks of sympathy. But all the couple could do was hold each other, lost in the emptiness that the death of their precious Jake had left behind. The next day, the news of the newborn's death hit the small community like a sudden and merciless storm. In Brantley, the storm arrived in the form of a small white coffin, symbolizing an end as abrupt as it was unjust. The news of little Jake spread quickly, each resident feeling the weight of the tragedy. At the heart of this storm was Mary. The happiness that overflowed from her just a few hours ago had been replaced by unbearable pain. Her eyes, once full of dreams and hope, were now dim with the devastation of loss. Ethan, equally shaken, was doing his best to comfort his wife, who had just given birth still with the cuts from childbirth, even though he felt that the ground had disappeared from under his feet. The house, once full of expectation and joy, was now enveloped in an atmosphere of sadness. Neighbors and friends arrived, one after the other, each bringing with them words of comfort and plates of food, a gesture of solidarity that was characteristic of the small town. Mary, Ethan, I'm sorry, Jake was, he was very loved, said Mrs. Perkins, an elderly woman who lived across the street. The words sounded strange to the parents, spoken in the past, a reality they were still struggling to accept. Preparing the funeral was a painful process. Every detail was a stab in the heart. The small white coffin, the flowers, the gravesite. The couple leaned on each other, united in their grief and determined to say goodbye to their son in the most respectful way possible. The funeral, held in their home, arrived with a gray and gloomy sky, almost as if nature itself shared Mary and Ethan's sadness. People gathered in silence in the living room, their voices low, their eyes full of tears. The young mother held Jake's little coffin, and her heart ached with every beat. He was so loved, Mary, said Pastor Thompson, placing a comforting hand on the woman's shoulder. And he always will be. He'll be watching over you from heaven. The words offered some comfort, but they couldn't fill the void that the little one had left behind. The woman, with her husband by her side, walked towards the small grave meant for Jake, each step an arduous journey. The funeral ceremony was a blur for that poor mother. She found herself standing in front of the people sitting in her living room, listening to the pastor's words, but she couldn't understand what he was saying. Everything seemed distant, irrelevant, the only thing she could feel was the tearing pain in her heart. After the ceremony, they went to the cemetery. The tiny headstone with the name Jake engraved on it was ready to receive the little white coffin. A young tree stood next to it, planted in honor of little Jake, a promise of life amid death. But the promise could not ease the pain of the parents. Mary knelt beside the small grave. Tears were falling uncontrollably from her eyes, wetting the fresh soil. Ethan was beside her, equally devastated, but trying to be strong for her. Why, why? The young woman whispered between sobs. The little coffin began to descend slowly, the sound of the lowering mechanism seeming to echo deafeningly in the stillness of the cemetery. The reality that she was losing her little one forever was starting to sink in Mary. She couldn't see that scene. She couldn't believe it. Then her desperation grew stronger, and she just screamed with all her strength. God, give me back my son. At that very moment, a clap of thunder cut through the sky. There was not a cloud in sight. The day was perfectly clear, but the sound was unmistakable. What happened? Everyone wondered. And then something unbelievable revealed itself. A faint but unmistakably human sound, a baby's cry, filled the air. For a moment, no one moved. 
too shocked to react. Mary looked around, trying to identify where the sound was coming from. And then she realized. The sound was coming from the small coffin, which was now standing halfway to its final grave. With a scream, the woman and her husband ran to the coffin and pulled it back up, opened up the lid and looked inside. It didn't seem possible, but inside the coffin, wrapped in a little blanket, was little Jake, crying and moving. The eyes of everyone in the cemetery widened with shock. The cemetery, which had been shrouded in sadness, was suddenly filled with shock, surprise, and for the parents, relief and joy. But what had happened? What should have been a moment of mourning and sadness turned into a frenzy of energy? The calm and quiet of the cemetery was replaced by shouts of surprise, cries of relief, and lots of running around. The baby was quickly taken out of the coffin and wrapped in a warm blanket. As Ethan ran to the car to get help, Mary held the baby in her arms, crying tears of relief as she hugged her miracle. Oh, my love, mommy's here, said the young woman who didn't know whether to smile or cry. When they arrived at the hospital, the medical team was already in place, waiting to examine Jake. Dr. Simmons's eyes, once sad, now shone with pure disbelief at the sight of the little one. She picked up the baby and rushed to do the needed exams. Every beat of his little heart, every breath he took, was a miracle in everyone's eyes. The tests began, and as they waited for the results, the hospital waiting room was filled with nervousness and anxiety. The community that had shared Mary's pain now waited with her, sharing her hope. The tension was palpable as everyone waited to find out how little Jake had come back to life. After what seemed like an eternity, Dr. Simmons came out of the examination room with a perplexed expression. She called the parents into a corner and began to explain. I... I'm speechless. Jake's tests show nothing wrong. His heart is beating strongly. His lungs are functioning normally. It's unbelievable. Her voice shook with disbelief as she spoke, but she didn't stop there. After much thought, we, the medical team, came up with a hypothesis. Jake may have suffered from Lazarus syndrome. It's a spontaneous resumption of blood circulation after the heart has stopped. She paused, looking at the shocked couple in front of her before continuing. Normally, this happens within minutes or at most an hour or two after the death certificate. But in Jake's case, well, that's something I've never seen or heard of before. It's almost like a miracle. The couple's eyes shone with hope and disbelief. The doctor, in her search for a scientific explanation, had come up with one that seemed to defy science itself. But for Mary and Ethan, the most important thing was that their little boy was okay. Their little miracle was alive and breathing, and nothing else mattered. The news of the resurrected baby spread quickly through Brantley. Voices whispered around every corner. Amazed eyes stared at the mother and baby wherever they went. Local newspapers and even some national television networks broadcasted the story, making their lives famous. The residents of Brantley, already united by their shared grief, were now united by joy and admiration. For many in the local religious community, Jake's story was more than just news. It was a miracle, a sign that there was something beyond human comprehension. The local church held a Thanksgiving service, and people began to treat the baby as a symbol of hope and faith. On the other hand, the medical community was confused. Doctors from all over the country were called in to study the case. Lazarus syndrome was the most plausible explanation, but it still seemed too incredible to be true. Meanwhile, Mary and Ethan watched in amazement and gratitude as the world tried to explain the inexplicable. But for that mother, none of that really mattered. Her heart was filled with joy and relief. Her Jake, her precious baby, was alive. He was growing, eating, sleeping, and crying like any other baby. The miracle was in every laugh, every look, every touch of her little son. The house, once filled with overwhelming sadness, now vibrated with joy and love. There was, however, one peculiarity that remained a mystery. The thunder that tore through the sky at the exact moment that Mary was crying out for her son. That, more than anything else, remained engraved in the minds of everyone who was present that day. The sky was clear, there was no storm forecast, and yet a loud, clear thunder sounded, as if the universe itself was responding to a mother's anguished plea. Local meteorologists were consulted, but nothing out of the ordinary was recorded that day, making the event even more inexplicable. That strange occurrence, the thunder out of nowhere, became part of Jake's legend. It became a part of the mystery, the miracle. 
For scientists, it was an enigma, something that defied logic. For the religious community, it was yet another confirmation of a miracle, a direct answer to the plea of that crying mother. In the end, the thunder, much like the baby's reappearance, remained a mystery, a part of history that would always be remembered and discussed, but never fully explained. Time passed and Mary watched her little boy grow up, his laughter filling the house, his eyes shining with life and curiosity. He was her little miracle, a constant reminder that even in the deepest darkness, there is always light. And so, life went on in Brantley. The buzz around the resurrected baby eventually quieted down, but Jake's story was never forgotten. For the parents, their son's story was a living legend, a story of hope, faith, and love. A story that reminded everyone in Brantley that, no matter how challenging life can be, there is always room for a surprising event. And if you like this story, I'm sure the next video that pops up on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. See you in the next heartwarming story.